Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we have a question from the 2022 Tohoku University College exam, and that is for a positive integer n, let s sub n equals the partial sum from k is equal to one to n of the square root of one plus k divided by n square subtract one. So we have two things we would like to answer. For positive real x, prove the following inequality holds. x divided by 2 plus x is less than or equal to the square root of 1 plus x subtract 1, which is less than or equal to x divided by 2. And the second is to evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n, our given partial sum. So this entire question specifically is centered towards more you know, understanding the concept with inequalities, but uh, there's actually a little bit of calculus involved. Well, not necessarily a whole lot, but a topic specifically from calculus is um, going to be very useful for the second question that we want to answer. First question to prove the inequality is pretty straightforward, especially with compound equalities. You want to start with the left hand side and the right and the center. Then with the center to the right, if you can show that indeed that the inequality holds for one side to the other, then the whole in compound inequality holds itself. Then actually you'll notice that as we continue, continue forward, once we get to the second question, that this is actually useful as like a lemma that's um, going to help make things a little bit easier to evaluate this limit, especially um, now that we have to take in usage of our partial sum, which makes it sound like at first at, at first glance that what was the whole point of um, ask, asking this inequality when we're given a sum, but it actually proves to be very useful later in the second question. So nothing more that needs to be said, so let's actually just jump right in. So we see for the first side of the inequality that I know it's a little bit dis, uh, disrespectful for me to say that the, I know the first step is if you want to add one to both sides of the inequality, then square. But you have to, can, there's also that we have to consider the negatives. But luckily that we have that positive real x of our, you know, condition that's added to here. Then we see that all qualities, all, all sides of the inequality are positive for x greater than zero, strictly greater than. So we're going to actually start things one at a time. As I said, that we'll start with the left and the center, prove that, then start with the center, then the right, prove that, then that actually showed that the entire compound inequality holds itself. So for that, let's um, start for the left-hand side and the center, and we're going to add um, plus one to um, both sides and to get inequality. So um, just to get rid of the minus one out of the way, so we have that x divided by two plus x, it, uh, add this with one less than or equal to the square root of one plus x, which is less than or equal to x divided by two, and then add this with one. And now uh, what we can do from here is we can actually make this so that it actually forms a common denominator and combine both sides that um, it's under one fraction. So after performing all that algebra, we're gonna have that this entire compound inequality is written as follows. So two plus two x, divided by two plus x less than or equal to the square root of one plus x, then less than or equal to x plus two divided by two. So with case number one, we're gonna start with the left-hand side and the center of our compound inequality. So let's show that two plus uh, two x divided by two plus x is less than or equal to the square root of one plus x. As I said that we have to be a little bit considerate about what positive and negatives of the square root, but again, that we have that x is greater than zero, positive real x, so we can actually indeed just square both sides with the least of our worries. So from here, squaring both sides, uh, that's actually for one going to cancel the square root function, and what I'll do is after squaring this, I'm actually gonna subtract this, so that actually forms that um, the inequality is going to be zero, which is less than or equal to one plus x. And then after squaring this, we're gonna get that, um, well actually, let me first write this in full. So two plus two x and then uh, two plus x quantity square, which indeed is just equal to one plus x and then subtract. Now the following expansions written is four times uh, one plus x and then square, then divided by two plus x quantity square. So we see that the left-hand side is uh, less than or equal to the right-hand side over here. So we see that indeed that's uh, greater than zero, but let's actually simplify this out. And if we see that after plugging all the X is going to work, but let's um, get to the end of that. So we'll get, again do the same thing with um, getting a common denominator over here. So after performing all that, so we're gonna have that this is again um, equal to, equal is um, continuing from over here, not to show that zero is equal to. 
So we have that one plus X and then multiply by two plus X quantity square divided by, well, first then minus four times uh, one plus X and square. All this being divided by two plus X quantity square. Then if we simplify all this out, algebra again, I can actually factor out the one plus X for one. Then completing all that simplification, we'll have that one plus X times X square then divided by two plus X quantity square, plugging in any real number X, positive real number X, this is always going to indeed be greater than zero. So we can also say that it's greater, strictly greater than zero or um, greater than or equal to zero. So that actually holds that this equality that we just showed is true indeed. So that marks that as checked. We'll be focusing on the middle and the uh, uh, right hand side of our inequality. So now we have that the square root of one plus X is less than or equal to x plus two, then divided by two. Now, performing all this again, if we just square both sides, so we're gonna have that square root of one plus x, then quantity square, less than or equal to x plus two, then divided by two square. Then I'll actually subtract this from both sides, so that actually yields that we're gonna have that zero is less than or equal to. Now, let's first expand this out a bit. So we have that this is actually just gonna be x plus two quantity square and then just divided by four. We didn't really do much to the numerator, but it's easy to square to fix the denominator. Then we have that this is subtract one plus x. So put that as a quantity. That's why I left that as a um, in parentheses. So this is actually not that difficult to do. So again, do the same thing with getting a common denominator. And we're also now gonna expand this out. So in the top, we have x squared plus four x, then plus four, just apply FOIL method, then distribute. Um, now, again, common denominator is a four, then multiply, distribute the four into the one plus x, then with your negative as well, don't forget. So minus four x and then minus four, uh, however you wanna look at it, minus four, minus four x, the same thing is commuted with addition. All this being divided by four then in other words this is the same thing as that after we um do some algebra and simplification so now this will lead to just x squared divided by four which indeed that it is uh, greater than equal to zero for no matter what positive real x we plug in so that actually checks that out and that would indeed complete the first question that we would like to answer so from that um, let's now move on to the second question where we want to evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity of s of n Okay, so now we're moving on to the second part of the question, which is to evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity of our given sum over here. So let's actually get to that. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to let x equals k divided by n squared. And then what I'll do from here is that we're actually going to plug this back into our inequality from the first part of the question that we answered. So this is just a straightforward method here for now. So after performing all of that, plugging this back in, so we're going to have that uh, k divided by n squared divided by 2 plus k divided by n squared, which is less than or equal to the square root of 1 plus k divided by n squared, subtract 1, which is less than or equal to k divided by 2n squared. This is actually a little bit of our issue here because we have a k in the, under the denominator. So taking that sum, the future step is actually, we're actually going to take the sum, the partial sum of all sides of the inequality, but we have that we have a k under the denominator. So that's actually a bit of a uh, obstacle we have reached. That's okay though, because if we notice that two plus k divided by n squared we, we can see that for each, um, well, for integers k running through between one to n, as we see over here, that we can actually put this inequality to say that this is um, less than or equal to two plus n divided by n squared, which is indeed can be reduced to one or two plus one divided by n. So from that, we can actually just plug, replace the denominator with two plus one over n, as again, with the inequality that we showed that this is less than, and um, plug this back in. So that means we're gonna have that this is gonna be k divided by n squared, which is less than two plus one divided by n. So that's saying this is less than or equal to this. So we can actually just do that substitution and that won't change the thing that we would need to do. So square root of one plus k divided by n squared, subtract one, which is less than k divided by two times n squared. Now, what we're gonna do here is, as I mentioned, we're actually going to take the partial sum of both of all sides, not both sides, every single side. So this, the, the left, the right, and the center. So if you can consider center a side. The partial sum of k divided by n squared, then divided by two plus one over n, 
which is less than or equal to now the partial sum of, oh no, I gotta fix this, I actually wrote an infinity symbol by mistake. This is a partial sum. Uh, this is n, that's supposed to be k over here. k is equal to one of the square root of one plus k divided by n squared, then subtract one. Probably put a parentheses over here, forgot to do that. Just to establish, just taking the whole sum and not the negative one, it's by itself. Then we take the partial sum from um, k is equal to one of k divided by two n squared. So how do we approach something like this? And it's also worth noting that the center is actually exactly what we want to show for um, s of n, as we have these inequalities, and then we're gonna take that limit later as it approaches infinity towards the n. Okay, so now moving on, how do we actually approach something like this? Well, we're actually going to use the a little formula that I'm sure everybody knows, and that is if we actually take the sum of um, k natural numbers, it actually has a close form. So that says that the partial sum from k is equal to one all the way up to n of k is going to equal to n times n plus one and then divided by two. So we're actually going to use this formula to actually replace everything that we need to do. So with that, let's actually make that substitution. What we get here is that we're gonna get that the left-hand side is gonna be one half multiplied by n times n plus one, then divided by n squared, divided by two plus one divided by n, which is less than, um, say, we're gonna just denote this as s of n which is less than or equal to n times n plus one, then divided by four n squared. And so we can actually reduce this even more um, with algebra, of course, and say that we have one half then multiplied by one plus one over n, then being divided by two plus one divided by n, less than s sub n, which is less than or equal to, forgot to say that, one divided by four, then multiply by one plus one over n. And that's uh, pretty much it because now it actually looks easier from here because now we just have to take the limit from all sides and that's actually straightforward to see that for one, anything from one divided one over n as we take n approaches infinity is actually going to approach zero. So now we're gonna take um, all this as n approaches infinity, then we see that from the left-hand side, this is gonna be one half times one plus zero so this is actually going to approach one half, and then this is going to be two plus zero. So the left-hand side we have is one over four, which is less than or equal to, so I'm going to say the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n, which is less than or equal to take that limit as n approaches infinity, and that's going to say that this is one over four times one plus zero, which is one over four. Would you look at that? We have that one over four is less than or equal to this limit over here, which is less than or equal to one over four. And the last thing you see that as they approach these two numbers, we can actually apply the squeeze theorem to say that indeed that the limit, the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n is actually going to equal to one over four. And just like that, we actually calculated the limit that we needed to um, evaluate this entire time. So that actually completes the second. And now that actually completes the entire question that we wanted to answer from this college exam question just like that. So there you have it. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.